friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share customer finishes as well as my own projects and I'm a few days late this week. It has been a whopper of a week and uh, I know many of you enjoy me talking about my family and so if you just humor me for a few minutes um, been a really crazy week. It's enjoyable. There are so many fun things going on with the Christmas season. Um, my kids are involved in collegiate choir and so they had uh, over last weekend they had three separate performances <laughs> and um, I attended two of them and the third one I did not. It was an all-day cookie stroll sing-along and they really they dress up in Victorian outfits and and had a great time with that and um, so it was a super busy weekend and on top of that um, my daughter and I drove to Chicago to pick up her boyfriend. <laughs> he lives, actually lives in Minnesota, and uh, he had gone to a conference in Michigan. So if you know, we're in Indiana, central Indiana, and um, he lives in Minnesota. He had gone to a conference, driven with some other co-workers to Michigan. So he was uh, on their way back. They were only about three hours north of where we are. So my daughter and I drove to Chicago to pick him up and he came and spent the weekend with us so that he could be involved in the choir activities with them. And uh, then he headed out uh, earlier this week and then, um, and then the day after that, uh, my son and I drove to um, Wisconsin and back in one day. <laughs> it was five and a half hours up, five and a half hours back, literally uh, left uh, it was 12 hours from the time I pulled out of the driveway to the time we got back home, and 11 of that was driving. So um, it was a quick trip, but uh, that meant that we brought uh, Daniel, our son, home from college, and he's home for several weeks here uh, for the Christmas holiday, and we're super excited. All those fun activities are starting up, getting that excitement going. I'm still not done with my Christmas shopping. I got some of that still to do. Um, but in the meantime, I'm still working on quilts. And so today I have four quilts um, to share with you through picture because they have already gone home. And then I have four more quilts on the ladder here that we're gonna go through today. So many fun quilts. I tell you, I have the absolutely best job in the world. Um, I can't make every quilt in the world. <laughs> can't make every quilt pattern that's out there or handle all the fabrics, but I sure enjoy uh, seeing the quilts that you are creating and the fabrics that you're using and the designs that you're putting together and um, it is such a fun job. So today we're going to start with some pictures of Carol's quilt. Carol's quilt is a fun Christmas quilt and this is actually the Barn Star Sampler by Shelley Cavanaugh. This is a book um, with 20 different blocks, seven different designs, uh, some large, some small, and Carol has done it all in Christmas quilts, which this is the first time I have seen one of these done in Christmas and it is so, so cute. So you can see from her uh, fabrics, she chose everything from um, the red trucks, the Christmas scenes in the red trucks. We have um, ornaments, we have swirls, um, lots of green and red in there. But what I love about this quilt is where she threw in those blues. And isn't that just fun? Because when you add in that, um, that dimension where you've changed up the color, it just provides this spark of excitement and a place for your eye to be drawn and just really give some interest to the quilt. So uh, throwing that, the blue, the ice blue in there is just a really neat effect. And there's Christmas, there's like old world Christmas signs and uh, just all kinds of fabrics that are just so, so fun, all Christmas and it all works together. You know, um, it's kind of hard to pull off a design like that when you have so many different fabrics, but it works perfectly in this pattern. 
So the original pattern does not have the border or the, um, the piano key border on there either. And Carol added both of those. And so um, really nice job. All those extra fabrics can be added all the way around to create that piano key border. She chose a green backing fabric that complements the front really, really nicely. And so Carol's quilt measured 103 by 120, so a really nice large quilt. And then you notice the pantograph we use. This is called the Glimmering Stars Pantograph. We made it a little open um, so that there was a little more space between the stitching itself, you know, a little larger design so that uh, those blocks could shine through and just a really, really nice finish. And uh, really enjoyed this um, in working with this one, this Barn Star sampler. Like I said, I hadn't sun seen it done in Christmas fabrics before, and I think it worked really, really nicely. All right, let's move on to, first, I have two memory quilts that I worked on this week, and here are pictures of the first one. So Jane brought me two memory quilts to finish up um, for Christmas projects, and these are both made from um, shirts, clothing from a grandma and a grandpa. And so this is the grandpa's quilt, and uh, I really, I don't know the family member that it's being given to, but I know it was clothing from a grandfather. So a super simple design, but it's super pretty too. So um, she put backing on all of these, um, shirts they were all shirts that were done for this one and then she put them into um those 16 into uh, 16 patches so and then with the white sashing it was really really pretty and all the blues um just a really nice a nice finish and super simple this is a great memory quilt to make um that is super simple. There's not a you know a complicated design here. Uh, all of these squares, um, I really don't remember. Maybe two and a half, three inches square. So it made a nice size quilt, a, a nice lap size quilt. The backing fabric she chose was a like a blue flannel, and it showed up the quilting design really really nicely. So it was like a royal blue color. We chose the diagonal plaid pantograph. And I love this design. I know I say that all the time, but it's such a versatile design. It adds a lot of texture, um, really brought the quilt um, to a new level, you know, and just um, complemented the, the squareness, and but doing it on a diagonal um, and with the rounded corners, I think really just adds a neat dimension to this quilt. We did use a, an off-white thread um, with the fabrics on the front. Uh, even though the backing fabric was really dark, the fabrics on the front, I didn't want to overpower them with a gray or anything, especially because we had a white sashing there. So I did an off-white colored thread, which means that you can see the, the design really well on the back. Anytime you have a light colored thread um, on, a, on a really dark backing like that, um, you can see the design really nicely. So um, beautiful. This would be a great way to make a memory quilt for somebody that you have if you've got t-shirts, not t-shirts, if you've got, um, you know, men's um, plaid shirts like this, this is a great way to do them. And um, like I said, Jane um, stabilized all of these on the back. It didn't make it too thick to stitch through. It actually kept everything where it needs to be and you know nothing was shifting at all because they were all stabilized on the back. Each one individually and then she cut those squares. It wasn't that she did all the squares and then stabilized the entire 16 patch. Each one of those squares was stabilized initially and that's the way I've done my memory quilts in the past as well that um, I, I will cut like the shirts along the seams and then where there's a big section, you know, maybe the whole front panel of a, a men's shirt, then I will put um, stabilizer on the back of that. I usually use the SF101, which is a Pellon, uh, I think I'm saying that right, um, product. And um, it's an iron-on fusible. 
<laughs> that was kind of like a double repeat there, right? Iron on fusible. Um, so it, it is fusible and I do that on the back of all of the um, fabrics, the, the shirts that I'm wanting to use and then I cut my squares after that. Um, it's too difficult to try to cut your squares and then to add the stabilizer you're going to get, you're not going to have um, consistent cutting that way. So I would stabilize your fabrics first, then cut them into the sizes that you need and then put them into your quilt and everything stays nice, um, doesn't stretch and um, is right where you need it to be. So a great, a great um, way to make a memory quilt for somebody in your family. So let's look at Jane's second memory quilt. I don't unfortunately have um, a pattern name for this quilt, um, but it is super cute. So the uh, all of the hearts in the center of the quilt are applique on, and those are all done with um, shirts and clothing, and so, so cute. So they are all machine applique around the edge, and then each one um, together as a conglomerate, they all make another large heart and it's really, really cute. All done on a white backing fabric. And then she's used extra squares um, of fabric all around to make um, a border, a wide border. I mean, this was like six, uh, maybe six inch squares all the way around this, um, the heart that was in the middle. And then the white backing fabric, I like the, again, the, then she did another white border on the outside of, um, of the squares that go all the way around. It was really a really cute one. Then there's a pink backing fabric, and this was just a regular uh, cotton. Um, so to complement the all of the hearts in the quilt, <laughs> we went with the deer heart pantograph, and this stitches out in rows where the hearts are right side up, right side, or right side down, right side up. It flip flops all the way across. It nests together really nicely. Um, just a very simple, um, very soft pantograph. We used, I believe I used a white thread on this one because there was so much white um, backing fabric. There's a lot of open spaces, a lot of negative space there is what we call it as quilters, where you can really see the design. And so the white thread um, just blends right in with the um, with the white um, backing fabric. Now Jane also asked that I do the binding on this one so you can just very barely see in the tip of this uh, of the photo where I had attached the binding to the edges. It's not sewn onto the back yet um, when I took this picture but she did a scrappy binding as well and so this was again was all fabrics that were left over from the clothing that she used in the larger um, parts of the quilt and then she uh, joined those together. They were all, I would say, five, six inches in length. Um, so there were a lot of seams. It was a little bulky in places, especially when the fabrics were a little um, thicker, but it went together fine. I For the binding, I um, stitched the binding to the front and then I um, press it over to the back and I hand stitch it to the back. For my bindings, I typically do about a three eighths inch um, seam allowance when I'm adding that on. That works fine if you are doing a quilt like this that just has uh, a white border around the edge. Sometimes if you've got a piece border around the edge where you don't want to clip off the corners, if you've got points there from blocks that, um, that it would be better for a quarter inch seam then that is done. The reason I like the 3 8 inch seam, I feel like um, it, when then when you fold that binding over to the back and you hand stitch it down, um, it fills up that cavity of the binding a lot better, and I, I like that a little bit. For this one, I kind of did between a quarter um, inch seam and a, and a three-eighths inch seam, just 
whatever you want to call that, right in the middle, two and a half, <laughs> two and a half over eight, or whatever that would be, because I felt like with the thicker fabrics, I would need a little bit more um, binding on the back just to make sure I could get it all um, over the edge, and it worked fine. Um, so just kind of play with your bindings. I know a lot of people do a quarter inch, and I just feel like sometimes it leaves too much air, too much space in the cavity of that binding. So I typically do a 3 8 inch binding if it's not going to compromise the points on the quilt on the front. To be honest, most of us are not going to sit and look at <laughs> the binding around the edges to make sure it doesn't cover over a point. And most of us don't have such precise... Um, quilting technique that we never lose a corner okay and I am personally I'm not that picky of a quilter I want to get things done I want to get them out yes I pay attention to details yes the quilts are beautiful um, but I'm not going to fuss and be upset if I lose a corner here or there it's just not that um, big of a deal to me um, in my own quilts. Now, customer quilts, I'm going to work a little harder. I want them to be as perfectly perfect as I can get them. Um, but I, I just don't want us to get so caught up in the precision that we lose the joy of the quilting itself. Um, it's not in the perfection. It's in the journey of making that quilt and putting yourself into it. And I hear from so many um, newer quilters that send me their quilts and they're like oh you know you're gonna see all my mistakes I don't look at all your mistakes <laughs> every quilt that we work on is in our journey and if you never start you never get to the other end and so embrace your early work um, it is part of your journey and uh, it tells a story that's why a little bit later I'm going to show you a an antique quilt top, is it perfect? No, but it's somebody's story. Somebody put time and effort into it, and I just think that we uh, should enjoy that and embrace that and uh, don't get so caught up on the perfection of things. We do our best, absolutely. I do my best. I'm not lazy or sloppy. Um, we do our absolute best, um, but if it's not perfect, I'm, we're not going to fret about it. So, so those are Jane's two quilts, and uh, Jane's quilts were, were wonderful. Um, I didn't go into that because of any anything with her quilts. I was talking about the binding and putting the binding on and how um, the uh, spacing, the seam allowance I use when doing a binding. All right, let's move on to the fourth quilt that has already gone home, and this is Cheryl's quilt. goodness <laughs> talk about perfection this just may be it and uh, this is the quilt pattern by Adita Sitar who she um, owns the laundry basket quilts and this is her pattern called Alaska this is incredibly beautiful incredibly beautiful I have never attempted something like this this is done with um, paper templates there's also a specialty ruler a creative grids ruler that was designed by Adita Sitar to go along with this um, and I'll link those down below if you buy the pattern from uh, the Fat Quarter Shop there are paper templates that come with the pattern you can also buy additional ones as well and then there is a, a, um, a ruler that goes along with it that's actually called the Alaska ruler <laughs> to go along with this quilt pattern um, if you go to the link from Fat Quarter Shop, there is uh, a link from that, from the pattern, underneath the pattern where it shows a picture of it, there is a link to a YouTube video that Adita Sitar did explaining all about this quilt, how you can choose your fabrics. Um, she, chose you how, she shows you how she originally did it in her something blue line and how it's all done in blues and then light. 
and I want to say six fabrics, seven fabrics, um, a couple of those being the light color and all the others being blues. Now, Adidas Sitar in that video does make a mention of how she'll change up the quilt sometimes by adding, by pulling out one of the blues and adding in an additional color. And that is what um, Cheryl has done here with hers. So you can see in her um, pattern itself, there's mostly purples. I would say that she began with the purples and then the print fabric, and then instead of keeping it all purple, she's added in the the orangey melon color there, which is so, so cute. These fabrics are all tilde fabrics. So some of them are tilde um, solids, and then you have the one that is a tilde print, and oh my, it almost adds like a kaleidoscope effect with the fabrics itself that she's used, um, with that one print fabric, um, but then also just the way that this is pieced together an incredible kaleidoscope uh, effect and just absolutely beautiful. This was a large quilt as well. This one measured 101 by 101. And the way it got to that um, size is that Cheryl added three additional borders onto the quilt and she made um, the half square triangle border using the half square triangle template. Um, you can also use a ruler for that if you're wanting to do that. And she did that all in purples. Really nice effect there. And um, really neat. So the backing fabric is a Moda Grunge, not a tilde as the front is. A nice, a nice addition. Um, a nice contrast to the front of the quilt. And then you can see the pantograph. This pantograph is called Golden Curls, and Cheryl picked this one out, and I think it was a, an absolutely perfect one. We've I've only used this pantograph one other time, and on another quilt that had very much um, a twisting movement or a kaleidoscope type effect, and I think this was a nice, a nice addition. This one looks more complicated than it is to stitch out. It really nests well together, and a lot of that, um, intricate piecing is done in the way it stitches. It's not so much how you have to match things up. So it really is, um, it looks harder than it is to stitch and, and a nice addition to your design library if you are a, a digital pantograph long armor. And um, so the, the thread I do not remember and without having it in front of me, it's a little hard to tell. I believe this was an off-white. The fabrics um, on the quilt top and then on the back. They're not a pure white and so the off-white thread just blended with those backing fabrics um, and the background fabric from the front of the quilt and uh, really made a nice design. So this is really, really fun. And this one has already gone home and um, I'm assuming Cheryl's got the binding on it by now. So uh, really nice, a nice quilt top. All right, those are the four that have already gone home. Now we'll move on to four that I have here with me. And let's start with this first one. You can see Abraham Lincoln pinking out over me here. So let's look at some larger pictures of that. Kathy's beautiful quilt was made from a free pattern. This is a pattern by Northcott, and I have linked it down below. And it starts with a panel. So they show it um, here. This is called um, Pillars of Strength. So you can see the, um, the panel in the middle, and then the striped border around here is created with half square triangles, pretty large half square triangles. But then you join, so you have a red and white one and a red and white one, and you join them right here on the seam, and it creates almost that candy stripe effect. So wouldn't this be cute, this pattern, if you had a Christmas panel in the middle and use that candy stripe um, effect right there? So on this one, it's, it, it's supposed to represent stars and stripes from the American flag, but you could very well change this um, to a Christmas one. You could have the red and white, and then the extra borders, might you might do those in green or white and red. Uh, it could be really cute done with some different things. 
So the panel size that you need to use this pattern, it says to trim it to 23 and a half by 40 and a half. So if you're picking a panel to use with this pattern, make sure that panel is gonna fit within that space or you can at least cut it down um, to get it to the, the size that's needed. So I know so many times, there are so many neat panels out there and a lot of times we buy them and then they sit in our sewing room, we don't finish them up. This is a great pattern to use. Um, really shows off the panel. You could do this again with some yardage that has a great um, motifs and things that you don't want, or, you know, cute little, um, um, what do I want to say, cute little landscape things or things like that that you don't want to get, you don't want to cut down smaller. Um, you could highlight those in the, where the panel is on the quilt. So really fun. Um, so... On this one, let me show you real quick there. So the panel itself, panel itself ends right here. You can kind of see where his wings um, are a little clipped right there. Then there is a section, a strip right here that has three, a light, a dark, and a light blue that is added to the sides of both sides. And then there's a skinny little blue one around here. And then that creates it to be the size that we need. And I really don't even think if I hadn't pointed that out, you would even notice that that was added. You would just think that was part of the panel. So that creates it to get it to the size that's needed. And then you can see um, the half square triangle. So here's the triangle of red right here. And here's the triangle of white. That is your square. And then here's the same the same block it's just flipped the other way so that we get our whites together we get our reds together and that's what creates that candy stripe effect then there is a red border there is a light blue border and then there is the dark blue border so the fabric requirements are all listed on the panel again this is a free download from northcott um, you don't have to put any information in. You just go and you can download and print it off and um, use that for any of your panels that you have um, that you need to be working on. So the pantograph, I think it shows up pretty well on the back. Um, she used the same blue. It looks kind of like a grunge type of model type of blue. It's not a solid. Um, the same that's on the um, borders. And we chose this pantograph. This is called Star Spangled Banner. This is available on wildflowerquilting.com and this is a free pantograph as well. So you could be um, make a whole quilt just from a panel and that's, uh, you know, buy your fabrics and you have a free pattern and a free pantograph um, and you can finish this one. But this one is so cute. Let me show you. The stars and stripes, Star Spangled Banner is what it's called. So it has stars and then it has the, the swag as well is what I would call it. So um, stars are a couple different sizes. You have like a medium and a small there. There is some over stitching just to backtrack to get back onto the stars so that you can get to the next spot, but nothing from row to row. So the only back stitching you have is actually on the row that you're on, not that you have to meet up anything um, on a next row. Really fun, really cute. So this would be um, a great project for a Quilts of Valor. Quilts of Valor, if you've not heard of that program, that's a national program to provide um, quilts for all veterans and service members. And you can look that organization up. I'll put a link down below so that you can um, see that. But they um, ask for quilts to be made in red, white, and blue colors. They are usually try to be 60 by 80. This would be a little shy. This is 60 by 72, so you might add a, maybe a just one more border on and it would get it to that size. Um, but you can donate these to your local chapters, local um, coordinators that might be in your area, and then they present these to veterans and service members. It's a great, a great, great program. Um, my... Um, online membership called Quilt Circle. We actually have a Quilts of Valor initiative where we are creating blocks, um, red, white, and blue blocks. We are working um, all on the same block for a couple months here and we send those all to our coordinator. She puts them together into um, 
um, bundles that's enough to create a quilt top and she sends those on to somebody else in the in the membership who then puts those together into um, a quilt and then we have somebody else that will quilt it and bind it and then we um, then we will present that to the coordinator so that she can gift those to servicemen and veterans and so really great way to honor those who serve the US um, in our military and um, you can be a part of that program as well really fun all right let's move on to this quote Janet's quilt is so fun. Um, you can tell from the larger pictures that this pattern is called the Carpenter Star. There's many different designers who have done Carpenter, score, Carpenter Star quilt patterns. I've linked one down below, but you can um, you can search online and find many designers who have done some version of a, of a Carpenter Star. What's fun about this quilt is Janet has picked fabrics that go along with the theme of the Carpenter Star. So she has some um, a lot of fabrics all done in browns and whites, you know, creams, but a lot of the fabrics have to do with wood. Now this one has a wood background and then it has um, anchors, but here we have some wood fabric. Here we have some like wood um, planks and things. Then she's got some fabrics that are, that are tools. How fun is that? This one down here has some tools here and then some garden type tools. Here's some old truck fabric. That's a really cool fabric. Um, there's some American fabric here. This one has rulers on it. Isn't that fun? So she's taken the theme of the pattern and then used, used fabrics that go along with that theme. All of her light prints, I love this, um, this fabric. I have some of this myself, um, is this alphabet fabric. And so it's a white, uh, like a cream color background, and then the alphabet itself is done in like tans and taupes. And so fun, so, so fun. It's a really neat quilt. So uh, the details are obviously in the larger quilt because to hold it up, you're just seeing um, half square triangles. Again, half square triangles is how it's done, even larger than that was on that, um, on that American panel quilt. So here is um, the half square triangle in the tan. Here is the half square triangle in the background fabric. And then we have the same block up here, but when you connect the two tan ones, then we get that, that diagonal line. These are even larger. These are probably, um, I don't know, every bit of eight inch, eight inch blocks there. And then she put a border all around the edges and she did a wood grain border. Isn't that cute? The border has and looks like wood looks like wood really fun love the whole theme of this the backing fabric is a batik fabric still in the browns which is really cute and almost doesn't it almost kind of mimic the carpenter star that's on the front um, if you look at it to me it just it kind of looks like that star all nestled together I think that was really cute a nice fabric to pick then the pantograph. Well, obviously with a carpenter star and all of the wood grain um, prints, we went with a wood grain pantograph. So you can see how this one kind of goes back and forth. You can see it comes in. Um, and honestly, this is a, this is one. If you if you're a hand guided long arm quilter, you can practice this enough to do it on your own. I did that when I had my hand guided machine that I actually could do a wood grain, um, and you could as well. You, it may not be as perfect, and it doesn't have to be, um, but just you come in. It's like 
you know, it's like a spiral where you where you come in and then you work yourself back out. A wood grain is the same way, except you're doing it more in an oval shape. So you're coming in an oval, you're working yourself in almost like a football shape, and then you're working yourself back out. Um, and then you can practice it on paper first. You know, if you, and, and again, I think I've mentioned this before, practice with your paper, hold your pen like this, because that's how you're holding the arms of your, the handlebars of your pant, of your um, long arm. So practice with, on a dry erase board or something like that, or just on paper, and just practice that, um, that motion over and over. Work yourself into corners, work yourself back out, work yourself into, you know, close to another um, wood grain, because you're almost, you're creating one here and one here and one here. You're kind of nestling them all. So just practice it on paper or on a whiteboard over and over until that muscle memory is in there, and then you can do it on fabric, but you could very well do this one hand guided. Went with a cream color fabric because the backing, the background fabric here is a cream color, and it just, it blends nicely. And then, um, and it just blends with that backing, too. Such a fun quilt. Really fun. Really neat. All right. I have a third one down here, and you've got to see this one. This one's really cool. goodness again this is an incredible quilt this is I, I've I've talked about before how I'll have a quilt and I'll lay it out to do pictures and then I look at it through my camera when I start to take a picture and I see something totally different and that is exactly what happened with this quilt so um, holding it up here is not going to do this one justice <laughs> first of all let me talk about the pattern and then I'm going to show you some pictures again because I want you to see um, what really happens with this quilt if you didn't see it the first time so this pattern is called Labyrinth Walk, and this is a pattern by Christopher Florence. This is a two block wonder, so this quilt is made from just two blocks. The way they connect with each other, it looks like it is an entire labyrinth or a maze. Um, so let me pull back and show you pictures again. I want you to look at this quilt um, if you don't see it right away, then I want you to kind of cross your eyes or kind of look at it a little funny. But this, the fabrics in this and the colors in this take on the idea that you could drop yourself right down in the middle of that maze and walk through it. It gives a 3D effect. Those dark areas make it look like those are recessed down into the box. It's almost like you could, like you're looking into down over the top looking into a maze. So look at these pictures again. Notice how um, the blocks, um, it's just two blocks. Notice how the white sashing that's in there creates the effect that you're walking through those walls. Notice how the white sashing connects to the blocks above it or below it, beside it, um, to create this whole pattern like it's all connected. Isn't that really cool? really, really cool. I love Janet's um, choice of colors. So you have the, and, and obviously it has to be done um, with the colors in strategic places so that you get that effect. So the black is what creates that depth effect, makes it feel like it's receding away from you. I love the blue. That's a nice, um, a nice bright color, really adds some uh, some fun playfulness to this as well. And wow, I, I am just in awe. This is so, so, so cool. So I quilted the whole thing, just saw the blocks, and then when I laid it out and looked through my phone is when I, I actually saw that, the depth that's created by this pattern. Absolutely incredible. Um, I love a pattern that looks so complicated. Um, but somebody has taken the time to figure out how to create that for us, so the, the pattern for us, so that we can make that quilt. And um, 
I just think it I just think it's incredible. I just think it's really cool. So for the pantograph, let me show you the the border because I think you can see it in there. This pantograph is called squared, double squared. I apologize. This is called double squared. Um, and we went with this because I thought it um, just really complimented, complimented the whole quilt itself. We did more of a tan color thread that actually is about the same color as this fabric right here. The fabrics on the inside are batiks. So the blue is a batik. Um, this tan color is a batik. The white and the black are both solids. You can see that up close there. So the pantograph, again, very angular, um, but this quilt, you didn't want to go with something spiral. You didn't want to go with something flowery. I mean, this one needed something to just bam, <laughs> you know, just complement exactly, repeat exactly what it was doing. Um, and so we went with that one. Double squared is what this one is called. So you can see how one, you're doing this square here then this square, and then coming and doing this one. So then the next row, when it comes in, it nests up in, up there. So just make sure when you're lining it up that you have about the same amount of space in between your rows as you have in between um, the block that's stitching in the row, if that makes sense. Okay, if I had separated this even more, then it would have been very obvious where the row was. If I had moved this up more, then it would have been, again, very obvious because, um, we want to just keep this even spacing between what is here that's stitched out in the design itself and the spacing between the rows. Really fun. The backing fabric. Now, she added the spirals on the back. Um, this one. And I think it's really cute. With all the dark colors on the back, the color complements but the design is totally different, that spiral. I, I just think this is really beautiful, really beautiful. And then the squares just really look neat on all that spirals too. The spiral has, um, so the back, the background part of it is more of a cream, um, a creamy color. There's kind of some smudges of the, of the taupey color. And then the spiral itself has just a tad hint of like a gold or a light green. Um, it's really a neat, a neat um, fabric. And I'll link the name of that down below. I don't have that with me right offhand, um, but that's a really neat one. So I am just mesmerized. I think this would be so cool. Such a cool quilt. Really, really nice, nice work. All right, I have one more quilt to show you today. one was all squares this one's all circles so this is an antique quilt top that Kathy rescued and so we really don't know the full story um, but when I first saw this quilt I thought oh my goodness those are all applique circles they're not um, they are fussy cut circles so whatever the original fabric looked like I'm almost assuming that the circles were all inner uh, intermixed um, and then it was fussy cut into, I think these are uh, two inch squares, so that all of um, the blues could be put together and all the reds could be put together. And the reason I say that is because there are a few instances where you can see um, on one of the blocks, you can see a different color very close. And just a couple, but let me show you. Okay, so like here at the very top, this red block right here has a red circle, but I can see just a tad bit of yellow right there. Um, so I know that at some point there was a yellow circle that was very close to um, the red. And I can show you several instances over here. Um, I'm just trying to piece the story together. I don't, I don't know what the story is. So 
Here's a green block, a green circle. On the very top, you can see a little bit of blue. Here's a green one with a little bit of blue. Here's a green one with a little bit of yellow, a green one with a little bit of red. Here down here, you can see it a little bit better. Here is one that's a, a green circle, but a little bit of red, a green circle with a little bit of yellow in the corner. So that's why I'm thinking that these circles had to have been intermixed with the colors together. And for whatever reason, they they cut all that apart and put it together and then um, made um, put all the green ones together. So sometimes you have a full circle like here. Sometimes we just have part of a circle, very small part of a circle, and then they've put all the green ones together um, and then put that in one long strip down the quilt, all the yellows together, and then those are all done in one long strip. Blues and reds, and then we, re we repeat it again. Very interesting, very interesting. Um, and uh, you'd love to know the story. But again, this is, I, I save this to last because what I wanted to highlight was every quilt is worth finishing. Somebody at some point um, had a design element in mind or had some fabric that they wanted to do something else with. I don't know the story, but it's part of their journey. It's part of our history as quilters that um, that this was put together. And I just think it's incredible. And uh, Kathy's a lot like me. She can't pass up a, a quilt top that hasn't been finished. She wants to, to get it together and just honor whoever it was that, that created this in the first place. So a fun primary colors, your reds, greens, um, yellows and blues and uh, very interesting to look at um, just really fun so the backing fabric that Kathy chose we might as well go with circles and look at this how fun is that all of the colors that are on the front but now we've totally changed it and done um, you know very greens but then we've just all the circles all the colors just a lot of fun how fun all circles so for a pantograph, you had to go with circles, right? We couldn't do something different. So we chose, and it's going to be a little hard to see because it just absolutely just matches right in with um, the circles themselves. So anything else would have just distracted from the whole um, the whole picture. So we just chose circles. This is Bubbles by Apricot Moon Designs, and you can get this on Urban Elements. And I like this pantograph because the rows... When you stitch out a row, the row above it actually overlaps with the one above it. The row, did I say that right? The one below it actually overlaps with the one above it. And so there's not a lot of um, intricate pieces to, to match up and to point because you want those to overlap. It wants it to just look like it's a, uh, you know, a bathtub full of, of bubbles, how they're all interspersed. And so we did a cream color thread on this. And the reason is, because a lot of these older fabrics like this, they're not a true white. A, a white, if I would have used it, it would have been very bright on top of a, uh, some fabrics that's been around for a while. And so an off-white, or actually cream was the, what the, the um, name of it was, and it just blends perfectly into that background fabric so that the circles are just adding the uh, texture on top of the circles that are already there. And then on the back, this back is so busy, I'm not sure any <laughs> uh, any color would show up, but um, but just adds the texture onto the back. A really fun pantograph. This is a great pantograph to use on kids' quilts, um, baby quilts, and just uh, it's just a lot of fun. So again, I say it every week, <laughs> but every quilt is worth finishing, whether it's a quilt top that you find somewhere, whether it's your first quilt, you're just starting your journey, whether it's your hundredth quilt and you are a professional at what you're doing, every quilt is worth finishing, so don't just stack them up when you finish them and stick them in the corner. Let's get them out, let's get them finished so that your um, posterity can enjoy them and um, your legacy can continue on. I do wish you a wonderful Merry Christmas. I hope to be back one more time before Christmas itself, um, but I hope you are enjoying all the family time and all the Christmas activities that you can. Just really embrace the season and um, enjoy the whole reason that we celebrate in the first place. So I will see you back here next week because every quilt is worth finishing. <laughs>